I'm Jaina Cipriano. I am a photographer, filmmaker, and set designer in the greater Boston area. And today I am here at High Output Brighton Studio 86 with High Output Academy and Women in Film and Video of New England. Photography has been the tool that I use to see the world ever since I was a small child. I was always stealing my parents' Polaroid cameras and posing my brother in strange places in the house. It's just evolved into the way that I see the world. I think things make more sense through the lens for me. It's always kind of been that way. The first job that I ever got was a photography job. It was a wedding in my hometown and I very quickly learned that I do not want to photograph weddings. I did love being behind the camera and I, I loved interacting with other people and I loved capturing these moments that I knew um, people would cherish. I often feel like I am just a vessel for the muse, which sounds a lot bigger, I think, than it actually is, but I think creativity is really a process. I've had a lot of people who ask me, where does your creativity come from and how do you access it? But I think it, it's, less about, it's less about locating it and it's more about trying to be open to it all the time. And, and everywhere I go, I'm, I'm always, I'm constantly searching for inspiration and I'm, I'm looking at the way things are made and the way things feel and the way people interact and, and how I can take those moments, those like really authentic moments that happen organically in reality and how I can take those and put them into something that I'm fabricating myself so that it, it still holds that piece of reality. I operate a lot off of finding things that, that really make me make me sing or make me vibrate. I can, I can feel them. And so when I, when I find these things that really hold my own attention, I'm always very quick to write them down. So I keep a lot of my, my ideas written down in hundreds of notebooks that are lined up on my wall. When I'm working on my own independent films, I feel, I feel really lucky that I already know most of the people that I know that I'm gonna work with. Usually it's, it's finding out if they're available and if they're interested in working with me. And we're pretty, a pretty tight-knit crew, so the answer is usually yes. Once I know that I have the people and like the manpower to make my idea a reality, it really comes down to me sitting down and getting really deep into the world of the film. For me, the most important thing in my work is the emotions, the emotions that I'm trying to convey and the emotions that I hope to bring out in my viewers. And so I try and trace the emotional beats throughout my, my work from A to Z. And once I have those down, then I know what I can do technically. So I, once I know how I want the audience to feel and how my characters are feeling, it's very easy for me to figure out which lens I'm using, which camera I'm using, like how I'm going to light it, what, what it's gonna sound like, what it's gonna feel like, how the camera is gonna move, because everything comes from that emotional underbelly of the scene. Filmmaking and photography for me feel very similar. I approach it from from a place of storytelling. All of my photos are about fabricated environments and telling stories and so are my films. So for me, they're very similar. I think the biggest difference lighting wise is that with photography, you have to be really specific. You have to use light to kind of sculpt where you want your viewer to be looking because you only have this one frame. You only have one chance to, to portray what it is you're looking to portray. But with film, you get at least 24 frames a second. And so you can be a little bit more mysterious. You can be darker because you have, um, you have, you have motion and you have sound and you have the way the camera's moving. You have the way your subject is moving. You can, you can hide things in, in shadows. You don't have to be so direct, which has been a, a big learning curve for me in learning to light film. But it's been really fun to explore and, and see the ways that I can, I can keep things in shadows that are still recognizable because they're, they're moving or they're, they're coming out of shadows. It, it's, to me, working in film is like choreographing light. In photography, it's, everything is so stationary. You get it where you want it, but with film, it's, it's about moving through the light and moving your subject through the light. Lighting is one of the most important things to me in my work. When I went to the New England School of Photography, I went in not knowing a lot about lighting. And after that first year in the summertime, it felt like somebody had switched out my eyeballs for somebody else's eyeballs. And it felt like I had been, for so long, I had been concentrating on composition and subject matter. And it felt like all I could see was light and dark. And it was this really pivotal moment for me where I was able to, to see the composition in lights and shadows and the way that you could create imagery um, like that and, and 
that changed the way that I, I photographed forever. And so when I'm working in film, I think of light almost as another actor, another actress, in the way that it, it, it has its own emotion and it can really bring out the emotion of, of a scene. Um, just the same way that an actor or an actress could. And so in my film, You Don't Have to Take Orders from the Moon, I use lighting as a way to explore the emotions that my main character was going through. And so I was able to use light in a way that didn't always pertain to what the environment actually called for. So I was able to use it in a, in a way that felt more dreamlike or more, more surreal. I was also really heavily inspired by all of the old Twilight Zone episodes. And so using that kind of like very dark film noir look, I thought it was something that I've always wanted to like really dive into. And it was really fun to work with such deep shadows and to use such like hot direct light on my subjects. This film is really about this one woman and her descent into her own madness. And so I focused heavily on keeping the light on her almost in a theatrical way and so that she felt really singled out from her environment. So we used a lot of, of spotlights, we used a lot of really hot direct lights without any, any modifiers on them while keeping the background really dark and, and not throwing as much light on the background. So she felt like she was really singled out from her environment and she was really like, the, I called it the last night and so it was really like it was her trip throughout her, her last night and the spotlight stayed on her through the whole time. So for Carissa Johnson's music video, Wasting Dreams, we did four different set designs for her. And one of them was these big eight by eight moving light walls that came in and slowly crushed her. That is probably the shoot that we use lighting in the most unique way. I had been gifted thousands of light bulbs uh, about two years ago and they had been sitting in my basement for a long time. And so when Carissa came to me and she's wonderful because she is like the ideal client because she trusts my process and lets me kind of do what I want as long as it works for her. And so I was like, I have all of these light bulbs and I've always wanted to do something with them. And I would love to squish you between these two big light walls. And she was like, I love the idea, let's do it. And so we built two eight by eight walls each with about I was either 800 or 900 one inch holes drilled in them. And then we fed the Christmas lights through the back and we screwed the light bulbs on the front individually. And it must have taken us, I mean, it, took us it took us a couple of weeks. I'm not sure how many hours it took us. We had three people on each wall behind it. So it was a really fun like choreographed dance of like the camera needs to move in at this time. And we had the spinning light that we had on her. So we would spin the light, we push the camera in and we would push the walls in while she would come running and it, it took us a while to get it, but at the end of it, I think it was worth it. It was really fun. Renting equipment is a godsend, especially when you're working on something that's gonna be like a one-time thing, or if you're, not, if you're not sure if it's something that you wanna invest in for yourself, it's always great to have the opportunity to try out equipment. My films would not be possible without rental equipment. I do not have a big enough budget to buy all of the equipment that I would want to. In creating these small, these otherworldly, larger than life spaces and small spaces, I think I'm really lucky in that I, I love fitting people into small spaces. And so a lot of my work happens to be about the theme of entrapment. And so that really bleeds really well into having people in these, these kind of small spaces. Using forced perspective and using objects of different sizes, I think I'm able to kind of stretch my environment and give the illusion that it's bigger than it is. Oftentimes when people walk into my studio, they're like, I cannot believe that you created these photographs in here. And so I, I think I've learned a lot of little tricks that can help me push the boundaries of my space the best that I can. On my last film, Trauma Bond, I worked with, with a gaffer and his team and they were incredible and it was it was such a joy to be able to communicate what I wanted and and just have it happen and honestly have it happen better than I expected it to happen most of the time and I find my biggest disconnect is I like to talk in emotions and 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 people like to talk in technical terms and so that is a, a little bridge that I myself have to get over in in, in communicating what I want but 
as long as I can bridge that little gap, I find we're able to communicate really well. And, and at the end of the day, things looked, looked really great. We had a lot of time for experimentation on my last film, which was really fun. And so there were a few moments where I knew I wanted the lighting to react like another character and so that my, my main character, Zira, could react to that. And so we didn't really have that scripted. And so in that moment, I got to work with, with Ben, with the gaffer, and talk with him about like, what are our options for this scene? And like, what, what are you capable of doing? And so he would show me like a couple different options. And then we would kind of choreograph this light scene. And we wanted her, her screams and her laughter to, to make the lights flicker as kind of like a way of it was like a, the, the scene was like kind of the invocation of the next scene. And I love being able to give that type of, of freedom to people on my set because I think it gives everyone more autonomy and it makes the project, it makes the project one more fun for everyone and it, and it, and it makes the project I think just, just better because everyone is really excited about what they're doing and really bringing their all to the table. And I think that to me is more important than holding on to like the, my director vision like kind of opening up the space for, because I, I don't know everything about everything. So I'm happy to bring other people's ideas in and, and, and change the way where we originally perceived something into something better. You can reach me through my website if you want to work with me or you want to work on something with me or you want to hire me for something. And you can find our new production company. We're Finding Bright Productions and we specialize on building larger than life sets and making dreams come true.